Prestige are not your typical pawnbrokers. We deal exclusively in luxury high-end goods because that's where the money is. Based in well-heeled Surrey. <laughs> this pawn shop loans against the most expensive. I can actually offer you 120,000. And unusual items. Ten fighter jets. This time... It's quite sexual, isn't it? Oh, my God. Big ticket thrills. Mean big money deals. How much you were looking for? Between twenty-five and fifty thousand. There's surprising sums. I really, really want the money. Really? And offers that are out of this world. Moon rock. It's actually from the moon. <laughs> no, it's the rock. <laughs> Welcome to the world of posh porn. <laughs> With Britain in the midst of an explosion in pawnbroking. I got 350. One shop is turning the traditional image of this much maligned business on its head. Oh my god. Can I take it out? No. Oh come on. Four years ago, local businessman James Constantino came up with the idea of loaning against the exclusive and unusual possessions of his wealthy neighbours in affluent Surrey. You can have your 90 grand. The difference between me and a high street pawnbroker is that I will look at almost anything of value. Sex on wheels, isn't it? Well, James's ethos is it's all about the money. The more profit you can make, the happier he is. I find James can get a bit carried away and he does like these risky ideas. <coughs> anything really unusual or a bit bizarre. <coughs> they excite him. Nearly a thousand potential clients contact the pawn shop each week, all after the same thing, quick cash. Good afternoon, proceed. And among today's inquiries, a potentially sticky situation for boss James. Oh, this is a blast from the past. This is uh, Kathy, a friend of mine, wants to borrow some money. She's got a business idea that she wants to talk about. I know a lot of my clients personally, but just because they're friends, you've got to be careful not to lower your guard and still go through your processes correctly. What does she do? She was a model. Oh, good. So, well, that'd yeah. be interesting then. See what she's got and what well, she, she wants to do. Well, she might have some nice assets. You never know. What are you going to do with her assets? I'm going to weigh them, <laughs> measure them, <laughs> and get hold of them and just make sure they're still worth something. <laughs> Limington on Britain's south coast, home to James's long-term friend, ex-model Kathy. This is where I live. But unfortunately, it's, it's not all this lot. At the very, very end, we have my place. Back in the 90s, Kathy had a glittering career, sharing the catwalk with superstars like Naomi Campbell and Kate Moss. I modelled from the age of 17 right up until I was about 30, 31. And then I had my child, and I even modelled whilst I was pregnant. Oh, this is all mad, mad memories. I haven't seen this stuff for years. This here, I remember it's in California, and that was for Selfridges. My gosh, my hair's so short. Took me all around the world. Just a fantastic, fantastic career. I had a gap in my life from the age of 31 up until now, I'm 47, where I haven't done any modelling. Um, and I was incredibly ill. Kathy's career was cut short when she was struck with Cushing's syndrome a rare condition which can cause the body to gain weight due to abnormally high levels of a hormone called cortisol. I went from a size 10, where my looks and my body made me money, I became obese. Horrendous problem with facial hair. I lost my hair on my head. If you were to look at me profile, my back, I had a hump, it's called a buffalo hump. You have depression, insomnia, it was horrific. But eight years on, and with her illness behind her, she's ready for a new start. Headshot, I, I need to be a lot higher. The illness took out, took out years for me. I think things happen and make you what you are now. I mean, I'm now sitting here, feeling all right, looking all right, and thinking about, you know, the future. With her sister and friend, Kathy's created a product that she thinks has the potential to revolutionise the lives of women worldwide. Uh, camel toe is the term that we all know, and I hate it. I hate it, I hate it. Lots of women suffer with this problem. Lots of us do. What we do is have this piece of neoprene. It will slip into the thong. Obviously, it's going to be stitched. It just eliminates anything that may cause 
embarrassment. And you've done the wash test and everything. On to get the business off the ground, Cathy is looking for a loan to finance a website. I want to borrow £50,000. I want to pawn some pieces that I have. Cathy hopes being an old friend of James will work in her favour. It makes it a lot easier for me pawning my items, the fact that I do know James. I mean, he's not going to refuse me. I hope not, anyway. Intrigued to find out more about Cathy's business proposition, James is on his way to meet her. There's nothing else like it in the UK, apparently. That's all I've been told. So we're going to drive down there, have a little drink with her and an informal chat and just see what it's all about. She may be an old friend, but there's little place for sentiment in the pawn business when it comes to five-figure loans. Actually, what's happening now? I have a solution, all right, that prevents an embarrassing problem that some women may find when wearing tight-fitting clothes. Let me show you. I'm on about contours of feminine parts of the body, OK? You mean camel toe? You know, camel toe is not a word I like to use. Is that what you mean? Yes. It's a word, to be honest with you, it's a word I hate. Well, what do okay. you call it? No, 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 I just say... Camelitis. No, not even camelitis. No, nothing like that. It's, it's not a nice word, and yet it's a, a problem, an embarrassing problem. That's why, you know, I, I need you to lend me some money. OK. What is it you've got? I mean, you know what we do. We do a lot of jewellery, uh, antiques, art. I do have a couple of handbags, Chanel and Hermes. I have some beautiful, beautiful jewellery. All right, we'll have a little rummage and uh, hopefully we'll get to the 50K. I'm really excited for you. It's well, going to be really... brilliant. OK. It was a really positive meeting. And yeah. the fact is that he really likes the product. See you later, Kat. OK, I'll, I'll be in touch. touch. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to getting hold of the goods, bags and the jewellery and meeting him in the next few days. Without the assets valuing up at more than the 50 grand, we're not going to be able to help her. So I'm hoping and praying, and fingers crossed, that the bits and pieces she brings down uh, for us to have a look at, um, stack up for her. In post-recession Britain, the pawn business continues to boom. Good afternoon. Saw it, liked it, bought it. But with that come more clients with unrealistic expectations. We will give them a reality check. You hit me now with a figure you're looking for. Around the 10,000 mark. There's no point wasting time. I'll tell you straight away, it ain't going to happen. I think it's going to be a struggle. <laughs> What's he looking for? Upwards of 10. So what's the reproduction worth? $1,800. <laughs> their expectation of what they think their item is worth and in reality, are, you know, are complete strangers. When they're paying retail for their items, they can be paying five, six, eight times on cost. You bought it for eight sixty, and you want to sell it for 1000 <laughs> But some items are worth tens of thousands of pounds, or more. Oh, my God. What? Have you seen this? What is it? Oh, jeez, this is beautiful. Look at that. Oh, my God. What is that bit? It's an engine. It's quite sexual, isn't it? No. It just looks like a red car that makes a lot of noise. That means, look at me, I want some attention. It means an extension for something that you're lacking. It's a business. We've got to get down and have a look at this. This is this is incredible. Look at it. Well, the client's just been in touch, basically, and has got a 458 Ferrari. He's looking for a loan against it. I think they're just shy of 200 grand new. But it's a very exciting opportunity for us. We haven't actually got one of those in stock at the moment. But yeah, it's an incredible bit of kit. <laughs> The Ferrari 458 is a pricey boy's toy. Wow. wow. <laughs> Entrepreneur Paul paid £160,000 for his just last year. I've always wanted a supercar. There's nothing like working hard and getting that big toy as a reward just to maybe show off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Living alone with just his cat for company, 32-year-old Paul spends every working hour running his two distribution businesses. Okay. From the start in the day, the phone can ring from 5, 6 in the morning with problem-solving, quotes, inquiries from overseas. Hi, Daniel. The charter that you wanted um, out to the Middle East is be $220,000. I love being my own boss um, at the end of the day, and I can tell people what to do rather than people tell me what to do. But the main reason probably I'm an entrepreneur is because I'm quite good at making money. You have a super day. I'll speak to you soon. Paul started a second company distributing e-cigarettes a few months ago. How many more boxes have we got, mate? 
With further investment needed to keep it operating, he's willing temporarily to part with his most precious asset. In order to get the business to the next level, I need a £50,000 injection. Paul needs every possible pound he can get from the pawn shop. So he's taken the car to James's vehicle advisor, Alex, for a service ahead of the all-important valuation. Looking good, isn't it? Yeah. That's why you don't want to get rid of it, you know? I absolutely love the car. This is one of the best Ferraris I can see ever being made. <laughs> Gonna miss you. <laughs> I'm a bit sad, but as long as I get it back for the summer, I'll be happy again. <laughs> She is what I would call sexy. Women are sexy, cars are sexy, and that's what it comes down to. Will these wheels be worth the £50,000 he needs to shore up his latest venture? In the heart of wealthy Surrey... Good afternoon, Prestige. This business has built a reputation for loaning against items that are a million miles from standard pawn shop fare. Hi, I've brought in a gold tooth crown. <laughs> Fantastic. I will still get very, very shocked and surprised at some of the weird and wonderful items that people want to sell. It never ceases to amaze me. You're looking about £20 for, for the tooth. Will she miss it? <laughs> No. <laughs> when clients realise that we will potentially lend against almost anything, we do tend to see some ridiculous items. Right. And some inquiries can literally be out of this world. And it's Moon Rock from one of the Apollo missions. Moon Rock, it's not a meteorite, it's actually from the moon. I actually thought someone was just doing a bit of a wind-up. Really? I didn't really what? believe that anyone, you know, would, number one, have a piece of rock, and number two, want, want to sell it. Do you have a photograph of the, the actual item? Can you email that to me? Arrested for what? Really? Oh, let me do a little bit of delicate research, shall I say, because I wouldn't want anything like that to happen to you, of course. James, yeah. this is interesting. What is it? Um, moon rock from the Apollo 8 mission that was actually physically brought back from the moon. The possibility of owning a piece of moon rock and having it actually physically in my hand actually got me going, I must say. He's saying, you know, I don't know if I can sell it. I've heard cases of the FBI arresting people who are trying to sell it. But apparently the meteorite ones go for a lot of money, so this is worth even more. Yeah. And he's talking like a couple of million. What is no. he going to bring in? No, he's seen a man in the photograph over now. What, well, a piece rock. of rock? <laughs> yeah. Apparently he said he's taken it into a couple of places and they've gone no, no, and didn't want to touch it, and asked him to leave. So whether it's contaminated, I don't know. As Patrick begins the tricky process of verifying the item, Lawrence has a new inquiry about some very old heirlooms. Well, these are three medals that have just come in. Two of them are First World War I medals, and the other ones I think is just a commemorative medal. I'd have no idea on the actual value on these. Yeah, they could be worth 10 quid, they could be worth 20,000. I just got, haven't got a clue. The medals are currently owned by their recipient's great granddaughter, and that's not the only thing that 30 year old Kelly has inherited from her family. This was Mum's house. She left it to me in her will. So, cos I've got a little family now, we've moved in, made it all nice for ourselves. Ah. We had to throw away all Mum's stuff. It's probably the hardest thing I've ever done, but she'll be happy that we live here, so keep her legacy going. <laughs> Kelly sadly lost her mum not long after she and partner Sam started a family of their own. Mum found out she had lung cancer about a month before I was going to give birth to Riley. She seemed fine for about a year. She deteriorated slightly while she was in hospital. They found out it had become more aggressive and gone into her lymph node. They called us on the Monday to say we should come to hospital because she's dramatically declined. And then by the Thursday, she passed away. With a family and a bereavement to cope with, the cost of her mother's funeral caused additional stress for Kelly. You see people that send their mums off and they have a nice uh, flower arrangement with mum on, or it might be in a horse-drawn carriage. I'd love to have given my mum that, cos she gave her all to me. We had to cut a lot of corners, but hopefully mum understands. What can you do? <laughs> it's done now. <laughs> Kelly's been making regular payments, but nine months on from her mum's passing, more than half of the £3,000 funeral bill is still outstanding. Every single month is a constant reminder that we couldn't give her the funeral that we wanted to and that we still owe the money and that we've lost her. While sorting out her mother's possessions, Kelly made an intriguing discovery. I started looking through these coins 
and we noticed that they were World War One medals and I thought I might as well get them valued and see if we can pay off the funeral with them. Although uncovering the medals could help her financial future, they've also given Kelly a glimpse into her family's past. That is my granddad Harold and that is my nan. That was on their wedding day. I wasn't really aware that my granddad was in the RAF or the war until I found these medals. I just hope I get a good price for them, even though it sounds a bit heartless, but it's what you have to do sometimes. Some World War medals make thousands of pounds at auction. If Kelly's great granddad can attract a similar sum, the young family will be able to settle their debts in full. Before valuing the more unusual items that come through their door, the pawn shop staff often have to carry out painstaking research. Oh, James. And a recent okay. phone inquiry about a supposed piece of moon rock has really taxed the team. Right, I did a bit of research on it. Basically, the upside is it's not illegal to own a moon rock, yeah. it's illegal to sell one. Moon rock, £5.82. Yeah. Okay. That's a meteorite one, though. This is brought back from a, a mission, apparently, that's illegal. Who brought it back? An astronaut from a particular mission. What astronaut? I won't say. So basically, we've got to lend some money against the so piece of rock. rock. Yeah. You can't verify it. It's impossible. You know what I'm suspecting? Here? You think it's. Da 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 da! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, these items are worth millions and millions of pounds. So if you're loaning those sort of sums and you present those pieces to an auction house and they say, sorry, we can't take that, it's, uh, it's not legal or you haven't got the paperwork with it then that could ruin you. Cheers. But as one deal bites the dust, James receives another unusual inquiry. Between 11 and 11.30. OK, mate, I shall see you then. Well, that's Chris. He's quite an interesting guy, and he's invented this tray. It fits around the waist of a waitress and it holds glasses. And sounds like a bit mad, but... Or a waiter. Or a waiter, yeah. Anyway, the point is that he's looking for between 25 and 50k. Fifty-six-year-old businessman Chris lives in a four-bedroom mansion in Hindhead, which he bought after making his millions in the property market. I went to the University of Life, but I knew that I had ambition and I knew that I wanted to get somewhere to make something of my life. I've had ups and downs, I've had money, I've, I've lost it. My wife stood in the kitchen and said to me, do you know what, you're unlucky you are, and I don't know if I want to be with an unlucky guy anymore. Um, that was kind of the beginning of the end of that marriage. Chris now lives alone with his pets. Bo and Phoebe, they, they sleep in the same bed together at night time. If you upset the cat, he, um, he craps on your bed. And <laughs> Since moving here 15 years ago, Chris has turned his hand to inventing and came up with a solution to credit card security found in bars up and down the country. This is my first invention, the card safe. So it's just a simple way of popping the customer's credit card into the drawer and giving the customer the key. While waiting for his card safe business to pay off, Chris has come up with yet another gadget. This is a product to help people with the, the carriage of empty glasses. Yep, it just pops over your over your shoulder, secure it around your waist. It slides around your body to help you get through doors. The cost of marketing his new invention has led Chris to the pawn shop. We sensibly think we need to raise between 25 and 50,000. To raise the cash he needs, Chris has decided to pawn his watch and mother's jewellery. It's just a fantastic watch. It's never missed a beat. I love it. I've had it 18 years. It's quite a big sentimental part of my life. So to have to pawn this now is uh, a big, big step for me. Chris and girlfriend Jo have a meeting at the pawn shop with watch expert Monica. Hello, sir. Hello. Um, I, I spoke to James. I've come to show you some of my gold watch and some jewellery. That's unusual, very yeah. cool storage <laughs> box. My mother gave it to me. <laughs> I really like it. Here's the resistance. Oh, it's a gold tag. Yes. Wow, I'm, I'm really into watches, but I've never seen gold tag before. No. It's unusual, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. How much you were looking for to raise? Between 25 and 50,000. Yeah, I will do research because obviously I need to see the top yes. value of the watch. Do your best. Will do, definitely. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. 
A lot is hinging on the valuation. It would be lovely to get somewhere between 25 and 50,000, but whatever they come up with, if it's a good number, then it'll be a great start. Although watches and jewellery are a steady source of income at the pawn shop, it's the big ticket loans that are the most profitable for James. He's on his way to London to appraise businessman Paul's Ferrari. I'm off to see Alex, uh, who is my uh, supercar advisor. We're going down there today to have a quick chat with him, look at this uh, Ferrari and uh, see what it's all about. I'm like a big kid in a sweet shop when I'm, I'm here, to be honest with you. We've got Bentleys, Ferraris, so I've died and gone to heaven, basically. It don't even look like it's from this planet. It's incredible. Oh, yeah, look at that. And the smell is amazing. How are you doing? How are you doing? You OK? Yeah. Oh, that's a mean bit of kit, isn't it? It's a proper one, isn't it? When it comes to the big ticket items, such as supercars, we always consult experts. And Alex is our expert when it comes to Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Alex, I don't know if you know, mate, I used to have a 430 Spider, but I used to get a lot of abuse in it. I don't know if you've found that. Of... Well, no, I mean, it all depends where you go. I, I tend to go places where it's just full of women. And, I was just wheel uh, yeah. spinning outside of Kentucky. No. <laughs> <laughs> if he's going to risk lending Paul what will be a substantial sum, James will need to see the car in action. Comfortable. I'm very comfortable, mate. Try not to take it sideways. This is a client's car, remember that. <laughs> I'm sure he just might have knobs under his breath. Oi, there is a buzz about driving a Ferrari. Just the smell of the engine, the revving of them, the sound and the speed. What's this launch button do? Off. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I do like speed, don't get but me yeah, wrong, but, but, yeah, but no, okay. the old palms are going a little bit, so you, right, you might want to rein it in a little bit, yeah. you know what I mean? No, I don't want to make you nervous. <laughs> no, of course you <laughs> <laughs> This is far Fuck superior it. to the thing I have. Yeah. Do you know what I really like about this one? I haven't been told I've got a small knob in it yet. Yeah, but hold on, there's a bit of time here. Yeah? The biggest downside about driving a Ferrari is that there are jealous people out there, and from time to time, they're going to want to give you some stick. Oh, we are, we are, we are. We ain't got any money, lift. mate. Get a bloody Lamborghini. Get oh, in, exactly, exactly. Get in the back. I've been telling him that for ages. I drive a pile of shit. Uh, what? What? Get it's... a Lambo. Get... I'm not really one for attention, so that was one of the downsides for me. When you pulled up at the lights, people were staring at you. I wasn't comfortable with that. <laughs> oh, oh, there are some characters. Oh, yeah, there are. <laughs> See, I told you we'd get called a wanker by the end of the day, didn't yeah. I? I was actually tempted to get one for a moment, but when I thought about it, I'm quite content to stay with my Chelsea tractor. That will turn right there, look. <laughs> I think I've seen enough, actually. I pretty much know where I am with it, and uh, I'll give the fella a call and uh, break the news to him and uh, see how we get on, but it's a fantastic car. Back in Epping, car owner Paul is anxiously waiting for James's call. Getting this money today is critical, really. It allows me to invest the money into the business and get everything up and going. I'm really hoping for some good news. I've thought about it a lot. I'm hoping there won't be any problems, and I hope it's a good deal. Good afternoon, Cosmo. Paul, hi. It's James here from Prestige. How are you? Hiya, James. I'm really good, thank you. Look, I've done some calculations, and I can actually offer you a figure of up to 120,000 on it. Wow. Up to 120,000 on it? Wow. OK. If you want to take the 50 grand loan, as a starting point, if you need to come back and top up at any point, up to 120 okay. grand is not a problem to me. Brilliant. Right, OK. Fantastic. It's been a pleasure, and thanks for letting me uh, have a little go in your car, but it's been brilliant. We'll look after it for you, no problem. <laughs> I hope you had fun enough. <laughs> It'll be tucked away, don't worry. No worries, I appreciate that. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Bye-bye. Woo! <laughs> 120,000 he approved the car for. It's ten times better than I thought it was. <laughs> wow. I want to jump up and down. <laughs> 
serving Surrey's super-rich can be a stressful job. So office manager Joe tries to maintain staff morale at the pawn shop. I could do shuffle, ball chain shuffle, hop step. Go on then. I don't know if I've got a supportive bra on. Shuffle, ball chain, shuffle, hop step, shuffle, ball chain, shuffle, hop step. Yeah, see, I did belly and tap when I was right, younger. Well, at least you know, if it all ends here, you've got something to fall back on. <laughs> Traditionally seen as a last resort, more and more business startups are using the pawn shop to help them get off the ground. The, the camel tongue thing, we've always had a bit of a problem with the names. That's oh, what people know it as, don't they, really? Like 47-year-old Cathy, along with her sister and friend, she thinks she's hit upon a profitable solution to a delicate problem. It's something that we don't want to use in marketing it. A glamorous past as a successful model has left Cathy with some luxury items, which she's off to retrieve from her parents on the Isle of Wight. Hi, Dad. All right. How are you? Lovely, lovely. Excellent. You good? Super. Cathy needs to raise £50,000. Oh, what a mess! I don't even know where to start. And hopes the fruits of her past career can kickstart her new business. Oh, wow. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, I don't know if I want to give it away now. I'm looking at it thinking, oh, it goes so nicely with what I'm wearing. I mean, it's just, it's just beautiful. These were from an old boyfriend of mine. These are really like, they're really vintage. They're beautiful. I want to be able to give everything to James and think, so lovely. I haven't used any of the bags for such a long time. I'm not missing, missing it either. I don't know. They're rather nice. Feeling a little bit emotional up here, but I have to get the business head on, I know. It ain't on at the moment. Her dad, Nick, is so impressed with his daughter's business plans, he's donated some jewellery to her pawn shop war chest. I must admit, the business venture sounds very interesting. It's something that never crossed my mind. It does sound as though it is going to sort of uh, fill a gap, if I could put it that way. Perfect. Take care. OK. Right. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers, Dad. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Back at the office, Cathy's invention has got chins wagging. I'm imagining Lovely. this thing to be like this. <laughs> yeah, well, it might be like that for you, but... I'm... What, are they in the pants? No, they're on the shoulder pads. <laughs> also bloody in the pants. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. What I mean is, yeah. the thing is within pants already. Within pants so already, So you have yes. to wear their pants Yeah, you put their pants the on and it holds all your bits oh, in as okay. a bottom line. Kathy believes her brainwave could be worth serious money. How oh, are you? Good? Yeah, I'm good. You're all right. And is willing to pawn three designer handbags, diamond earrings and a bracelet to secure the funds she needs to get the business going. Right, I hope you're going to like what I've got. I'm sure I will. Well, that's nice. Absolutely wonderful. <sighs> well, they were from an ex. Aren't they beautiful? Wow. Mmm. They're stunning, aren't they? Yeah, good. Good? Oh, okay. good. Oh, I'm glad you like. Well, the jewellery's lovely. Cathy and James are old friends, but if he's to loan her any money, he must be absolutely sure of her item's worth. Oh, wow. Well. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll get Patrick up here and... Uh... He knows a bit about bags, doesn't he? He knows a bit about bags. Patrick! Patrick! Patrick's role is basically the bag man, although he might get the hump when you refer to him as that, but his expertise is leather goods. He understands them. He does that very well. So they look pretty good to me. That looks like a vintage... Yeah, you know, vintage crook, yeah. Crook, yeah. The bag business has really grown a lot for us. Uh, we do maybe 60, 80 handbags a week coming in, and they can rally anywhere between 600, 800, up to sort of 20,000 pounds, I'm talking sterling. We've got a Hermes, uh, which Hermes. is boxed Hermes. and it's got everything, yes. looks like it's got everything with it. Lovely condition it's again. It's gorgeous. I mean, I say, Nine times it? out of 10, they're fakes. Um, it's getting worse because a lot of copies are really, really good now, and it is getting harder to tell. Yeah, it smells lovely. Well, you can smell that when I open it, it smells lovely. Look. You know, what happens now is because a lot of the fakes are so good, I will get a second opinion. Well, look, leave it with us. Oh, and you'll let me know. We'll let you know ASAP. But you haven't got any idea. You can't even sort of give me any... I don't want to give you a little inkling just yet. You don't think even a tag? wrong inkling. OK, bye, guys. She's obviously a woman that's had money with her modelling career. She's obviously been surrounded by luxury items throughout the years, and uh, she's managed to collect quite a few nice bits and pieces, which is great. 
we've got to go through the appraisal process. It takes time and uh, in the coming days, hopefully we'll have some numbers for her. Some turn to the pawn shop for help with their future. For others, like 30-year-old Kelly, it's in the hope of breaking with their past. Oopsie daisy. Uh -oh. Unemployed and struggling financially, she wants to sell her granddad's World War medals so she can finally pay off the loan she took out to fund her mother's funeral. We tend to come to this park because it's near to our house and we can walk here so it doesn't cost anything. You can just bring a packed lunch. Quite depressed about it. Don't know what to do about it anymore. So I'm pinning all my hopes on the medals. Hopefully they will be worth a lot of money. The medals are currently Kelly's only hope of getting out of debt. Right, take Daddy. Daddy's going to get the gate. Lawrence has turned to a specialist in London to find out if the medals are worth anything like the thousands Kelly needs. The fact that they're not actually marked out for any particular battle or particular engagement makes me think that they could be campaign medals. But then again, you know, I'm no expert on medals, so that's why we take it to the experts. Will Stephen, a specialist in this area, be able to shed any light on the war medals? Hi, Stephen, how are you doing? Hi, Lawrence, how are you doing? OK, I'm good. I'll see you again. OK. Yeah, it's always nice to see you. What good is you brought me this time? Well, I've got a couple of medals. OK. I hope you can tell me a bit about them. Right, They're both Air Force medals, World War I. And we have a victory medal from the First World War. The unique thing about them is they're all named. They have the number yeah. of the person, his rank, and then the person's name to Corporal Sutton. So he was a, probably almost certainly a mechanic. You're 100% sure that he didn't see action? He probably was in the background. Yeah. He was either a mechanic or somebody like that. Yeah. I can make you an offer for them, but I think it's best to speak to her and see what she has to say. Thank you for your time. Sorry. OK, no problem at all. That's all right. See you soon. We've got the items valued now. Kelly has got to look at the value, the great sentimental value she holds with them, and compare it to the offer that I'll be able to make to her. While expert eyes are required for many items, some walk-in clients can get a result from the pawn shop there and then. Uh, it's jewellery that I've had for many years. It was um, things that have been bought for me. Even if it's not always the news they were hoping for. These uh, are for us, they're not, um, not real ones, they're unfortunately, not real ones. No, no. But they're nice. Exactly. I don't know how much they were, so say they were a gift, so... Uh, cheapskate, huh? <laughs> Inventor Chris is having to wait a little longer for his valuation. While the pawn shop assesses his watches, he's busy promoting his new glass carrier invention. How are you, sir? OK, dear. I'm Chris from Glasshouse. Nice to meet you. Chris has turned to the pawn shop to fund a marketing push. But until he gets the money, his only advertising option is taking his invention from pub to pub himself. Between £25,000 and £50,000 would be fantastic. I can then kick off with a proper professional marketing plan with the new product. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm kind of nervous, but, you know, obviously it's the first time I've done it. Thank, thanks, I do. All the best. Pawnbroking was the last resort. Other than sitting on the street corner with, playing my guitar with a flat cap on the floor, I had no choice. If Chris is to get his money, the first hurdle is in-house watch expert Monica. She needs to confirm it's not one of the convincing fakes flooding the market. You can see it's got convention mark, which is here, and it also got a Swiss hallmark, so you're 100% sure that it's a real watch, it's a real bracelet. All the serial numbers on the watch match the serial numbers on the paperwork, so... Yeah, some tags hold their value, some tags don't hold their value, but that uh, having pure gold bracelet, 18 karat yellow gold, definitely adds the value. Like Chris, Kathy and her business partners have a concept they think is unique, but they've run out of cash to develop their new invention. Look at how they feel. They're anxiously waiting to hear if Kathy's designer bags and jewellery will fetch enough at the pawn shop to keep them going. I mean, I don't want to say I'm feeling impatient and that I'm losing sleep and that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit jittery, but I really, really want the money. When's he going to give you his, his decision? How long did he say? He said to me a couple of days, and we're now four days down from that. I mean, I can't phone him. I can't do anything like that. But we've got 
deadlines I can't to meet. Well, I don't want to look desperate. I just want to get on with it. I'm really hoping that I'm going to get this £50,000. We all are. I'm just waiting for that phone call now that's going to change everything. The wait is frustrating, but James can't cut corners, whatever his relationship with the client. They look nice. That's a very good stone there. It's an unusual shape. They're really good. Well, that's mm -hmm. all good. We'll get back to the client, but thanks for looking. Yeah, in. they're very nice. The jewellery has impressed James, but Kathy's designer bags need to be the real deal too. So James has sent Patrick to dealer Claudia to get a second opinion on their condition and value. Hi, Claudia. Oh, hi, Patrick. How, How are, are you? you? Good. Good to, see you. Good to see you. Are you well? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. Well, yeah. I've got Ooh, some nice. interesting little items. Oh, there's a crook. I knew you don't see many of those. What do you think? It smells of mould a little bit. Mould a little bit. <laughs> I think it's quite old. 96. A bit lovingly used, I suppose. But... The metal is a bit tarnished, and especially here, this part, yeah, where the clasp is. Yeah, yeah. This is almost silver. Yeah. So there's no way, really, that you can fix that. Not great. According to this expert, the first bag is far from being in mint condition. We're going to do a loan on this for the lady. We need to know really what the best retails are achievable. The bag is nine years old, Not so really you, know, that, you yeah. have to kind of incorporate that in the in the in the valuation. The black one, the caviar is nice. Yeah, the caviar is nice, and it's popular. It's a very popular style. Um, this one. On the croc. I'm not so sure. But it's dated as well, isn't it's it? It's quite dated, and it's not spectacular. Hmm. Client Cathy is relying on pawning all her bags to get the loan she needs. But under Claudia's exacting eye, it seems some just aren't up to scratch. There's always a compromise. If it's not a special style, yeah. then it has to be a special price. Oh, Claudia! It's not the news Patrick was hoping for. Condition is everything on the bags. It has to be, they have to be really pristine condition. Okay. Will his boss James still be able to loan Kathy the 50 grand she's counting on? For James and his team, another month valuing the expensive and unusual possessions of Surrey's great and good is almost over. What do you want to do, sell them or loan against them? But to be able to offer the clients the loans they desperately need, the items must be assessed as having high retail value. At the end of the day, I want everything that comes through the door to be worth a lot of money, but sometimes the client has to take a reality check. And to be quite honest, sometimes I need a reality check. You would be looking at about £140. Is that for both of them? That's for all of it. Front of house man Lawrence is visiting client Kelly to reveal what he's learned about the value of her granddad's medals. I've done a lot of research on the medals. I've got some news about her grandfather, who she's never known anything about. I've got butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> I just want him to hurry up and come so I can find out the good news or the bad news. Unemployed Kelly was hit with £3,000 worth of funeral costs when her mum passed away nine months ago. She's hoping that selling the World War heirlooms will raise enough to wipe out that debt. It is a big stress for us all the time. It never goes away. Do you think they'll be worth a lot of money? I'm pinning all my hopes on it, but I shouldn't. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Kelly, Lawrence. how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Lawrence, nice Sam. to meet you. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. you. And nice to meet you, little fella, how are you? Are you That's right? Riley, I'm Sam. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Ooh. OK, let's have a look at your bits and pieces. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know anything at all about any of these medals? No, just that they belong to my granddad. This one, actually, we don't think is a World War really? coin. What we actually think the medal is, the shooting medal for the Air Corps, <laughs> OK? So that's not so interesting. The last medal, this is actually what you call a victory medal. OK. OK? It was given to anyone who actually fought in France. OK. OK? So it had to be actually in the war zone. Have you actually noticed the inscription at the bottom before? Is that Corporal? Yeah. H Sutton, RAF? Yeah. So it's so, got my surname yeah. on it. Yeah. What makes these special, the British ones, are they're the only ones that are actually stamped with the names 
of the actual soldiers. Oh, OK. I mean, we're very lucky in this country with the medal side of it. So each one, you know, you can go on a certain site and you'll see the history of these people, every event they're in, battle they're in. And some of them look like supermen. So I've done a lot of research on this. So what I did was I actually looked into his war record. He's actually a mechanic and a driver. That's oh, his oh, index card. OK. So that's something nice for you to have. That's amazing. It's amazing. Though. Look. It's quite emotional because we've never it? met yeah, this person, yeah. but they were quite, they did a good thing. Of course. The Air Force Medal yeah. is about three to four pounds. Okay. Get your bus <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Now, this one, to me, yeah. personally, they should be worth thousands. Okay. Because everyone who actually got these yeah. fought. We're in a war zone. Yeah. Unfortunately. Oh no. The value on this is about the £10 mark. Oh no. I know the money is very disappointing, but at least you know a little bit more about your great granddad. Yeah, that's so important to us. Really appreciate you coming over to let us know about that. Oh, them. you're absolutely welcome. You're a nice couple, a nice kid. Well, yeah, he's a bit <laughs> naughty. Bye bye. I came here a little bit worried because I knew the money wasn't going to be there. And actually, to see some of a tear in their eyes, to find out a nice bit of history about their family, is actually a really nice feeling. I'm quite happy that the medals weren't worth a lot of money because I don't actually think I'd have the heart to part with them. And we just have to not go on holiday this year um, and cut back on a few things. I found out so much about my family and about my great granddad that I didn't know before. In Hindhead, inventor Chris is also nervously awaiting news from the pawn shop. Chris has invented a glass carrier he thinks will prove a huge hit in the hospitality industry, but lacking funds to market it, he's having trouble spreading the word. I'd love anywhere between 25 and 50,000. Just, just waiting for a call, really. <laughs> he's looking to loan against his watch and his mother's jewellery. How are you getting on with Chris's tag, the old tag? I was thinking five and a half for him. OK. All right, yeah. For the watch. Well, I've done some work on his other bits and pieces because he's got some diamonds in there, he's got some gold. Gold. You no, know, he wanted 25, but I yeah. don't think, think we're stretching it as it is, really. But if you can give him a call, just yeah. let him know, I've done the work on that, you've had a look at the watch, and mm. this is the maximum we can lend him. I don't know how he's going to take that. You'll have to... Uh... I'm going to give him a call. <laughs> Hello. Oh, good morning. Is that Chris? Yes. Monica calling from Prestige. How are you? OK, Monica. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. We, we've done all the research on your watch and um, James had a look at your jewellery as well. What was the... Um, what was the most valuable item? Was it the watch? The watch, the diamonds were good. Um, so, in total, we can lend you 20,000. 20,000? Well, OK. Uh... That we hope, you know, hope it will help. Um, that's, the max, that's the maximum we can do. OK. Well, that's a fantastic start, 20,000. If you could send, send me the contract then, uh, Monica, that, that, then we can... Get wheel, wheels in motion. And we can worry you the money straight on. Th thanks, Monica. All right, then. Thanks for the call. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Well. Not quite what we wanted, but £20,000 is a great start. I can take my new idea forward. We can now start marketing. It never occurred to me that the watch would be so uh, pivotal um, in my life, in my business life. Hopefully, it's not goodbye, it's au revoir. Ex-model Cathy has asked her old friend James for a loan of £50,000. If her designer handbags and jewellery aren't worth this amount, the pawn shop boss will be left in a very awkward position. You've got to be careful in business when you're dealing with friends. She wants 50 grand, it's a lot of money. I'm hoping that she's going to be happy with what we're going to present to her today. But at the end of the day, business is business. Cathy needs cash fast to keep her business dream alive. She's about to discover if she can take it to the next level. Oh, hello. How are you? You all right? No, I'm not. Mm. Do you know, I'm really nervous. Have you got some good news for me? 
It's always difficult when someone you know comes in with their items, and because we're friends as well. Um, if ever I was to have to sell those pieces, it would be a really difficult thing for me to do because I know they're yours. So you have to bear that in mind, and I hope right. that you know that's not going to be a problem for you. No, no, no. Well, look. We took the bags, the bags were good. Were they good? Yeah, the Hermes is particularly good. Okay. Um, and it's all about condition with those, and the Chanel's are good as well, and that crocodile vintage one. Uh-huh. Um, there was a problem with it. Oh. Yeah. Is it real? Have you smelt it? <laughs> Seriously. It smells like the inside of a wire reg Datsun Mika. <gasps> but it's still worth quite a lot of money, because it's vintage. We've been through the jewellery, some of the stones, Quality-wise, are really, really good. Okay. All right. Well, look, we've actually totted it all up, and I can tell you that we're able. Mm, mm, God. We're able to give you fifty grand as a loan, if that's what you're happy to accept. I'm shaking. I'm panicking. Is that good? Oh, well, that's good. You're all right. Well, I hope it gets you to where you need to be anyway. Oh, babe. Yeah? Yeah? Thank you. Yeah, James Constantino, star. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. I can't quite believe it. It's sinking in. I'm shaking. But in a minute, I'm going to have £50,000 in my account to move my business forward. And I'm going to go and meet the other two girls that I'm in business with, open a bottle of champagne, tell them the good news, and getting my business up and running. Can't wait. It's even more pleasurable giving a friend some good news as opposed to a total stranger. She seemed absolutely highly delighted. She got very emotional. If the camel toe pants come in battleship grey, you know, I might even get a couple of pairs for myself.